I'd started this project with Brazil, and um, initially it was a it was an ethnographic project that um, I'd gotten funded by the Department of Education to go and learn Portuguese in Brazil, with the plot that I would then go back and do this research. But like they weren't asking me to, but it was like we want to fund you with the hope that you'll continue to move forward with this research idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was going to probably be like my master's thesis or my dissertation was to like keep on going back to Brazil during the World Cup and during uh, the Olympics and like witness all the changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed up to Brazil like a week earlier than my program was, maybe two weeks earlier because of like some miscommunication and uh, that was great because it gave me the ability to be myself in another country just wandering around. Yeah. But like one of my research hypotheses was that there was going to be this big social like resistance and like kind of movement like in resistance to the, like the upcoming events right. and uh i foresaw that happening but it was you know a hypothesis right and i show up to brazil and like two maybe three days later it happened but it happened like big like fifty thousand people protests in rio oh, like wow. 200,000 people protests in, uh, 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 sorry, Sao Paulo, like, and like at one time there was over a million people throughout the country like protesting because every major city had massive movements going on at the same time and just like happened overnight. Like wow. I interviewed people that like, you know, big corporate guys that had friends that worked in like the Brazilian equivalent of the FBI and they were like, we didn't see this coming. Like, <laughs> nobody saw this coming. Um, and so here I am, at like, two, three days in, and I'm like, not only did my research hypothesis come true, but, like, it's way bigger than I ever saw, like, saw that it could ever become, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was just, like, kind of enraptured by it. Like, I kept on going out and, like, getting deeper into it and with my, like, really horrible Portuguese at the time, like going and trying to like interview people and they're just like, keep trying kid. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember even talking to a videographer at the time who was a friend of my brother's and he was just like, you're there? And I was like, yeah, I'm here. And he's like, oh my God. And he's like, what equipment do you have? <laughs> like, I have an iPhone 4. <laughs> he was just like, let down so yeah. he's just like okay then you just got to go out there and do what you can with it you know yeah. and there i was like in the middle of this like massive like just you know static energy and feeling like alive wanting to capture it and uh you know i was taking photos with my phone and like copy videos and trying to interview people with like the microphone and all that um but uh i found like kind of disheartened by the experience in some way because like as I'm breathing like uh, tear gas and light amounts and like I'm seeing these people like running to the front of it and I was like I want to be that guy and I was like but I want to be there for a reason yeah. you know and when I was talking to some of my friends that were like academics they were just like well it will all correlate you'll write a book about it in like five years <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Thrilling. And and so <laughs> that was like kind of a letdown on its own. Yeah. And then as well, like um, the other thing was like as I was watching how the world media was portraying a lot of this stuff, I was like really just frustrated because I was like, that's not what I'm seeing, you know? Like yeah. there needs to be some other representation. 